Welcome to the addition and integration. Let's go. So it says, find the values of x for which the function is discontinuous. So the function is going to be discontinuous when the denominator is 0. So whenever x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, that is when it is discontinuous. So x squared minus 4, that works out to be when x is equal to minus 2 or when x is equal to 2. All right? That's when the function is discontinuous, all right? So you can just make a general statement. These are the values of x when it is discontinuous. Not continue, not continuous. Nice and easy. It says now, hence or otherwise, find the limit as x approaches negative two of x cubed plus eight over x squared minus that. So that's part one. Moving right along to part two. So to do part two, they want us to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative two the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x cubed plus 8. Limit as x approaches negative 2 of x cubed plus 8 over x squared minus 4. All right. Now, in order to do this limit, all right, we need to remember the rule, the rule about a to the n minus b to the n, all right? Don't forget that rule, a to the n minus b to the n, which is a minus b times a to the n minus one, and all of that stuff. So we're gonna rewrite this then as the limit as x approaches minus two, we write it as a limit as x approaches minus two of x cubed plus eight, we're gonna rewrite it as x, this x cubed plus eight, I can rewrite it as two cube. All right, I can rewrite it as two cube and I can change that plus right here. I don't even need to change the plus, I can keep it like this. So I have x cubed plus a cube. All right, and we know how to expand what is a cube plus x cubed, so let's go back to module one. Remember from module one, we know that a cubed plus b cubed is equal to, how you expand that? It's a plus b all cubed minus three ab into a plus b. Don't it? This is how we use to expand that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so you can use this formula to expand it if you want, or you can use this formula. You can always rewrite it as a cube plus b cube, a cube plus b cube, which is equal to a cube minus, minus b cube. All right, so you can use any one of these two to expand it. I'm going to use the first one. So I can rewrite it as x cubed, which is gonna then just be x minus two times it's gonna be x square plus x times minus two plus minus two square. Nice and easy, divided by x square minus four, 
I can rewrite all of that now as x minus two times x plus two. Or this should be x minus minus two, which is x plus two. Nice. If you're wondering where did I get this from, just put in or research what's the formula for a to the n minus b to the n. That's the formula we're using. So it's going to be a minus b. So it's going to be x minus minus 2 times a to the n minus 1, which is x to the 3 minus 1 is 2 plus x, which is a times b, a times b which is x times minus two plus b squared. So it's negative two squared, all right? Then what's gonna happen? This x plus two, it's gonna cancel this x plus two. So what are we left with? We are left with that this is equal to the limit as x goes to minus two r. Huh? It's equal to the limit as x goes to minus two r. Huh? This becomes x squared minus 2x plus 4 over x minus 2. We can then apply x equal to negative 2 to get. Applying the negative 2, you're going to get negative 2 squared. Negative 2 being squared negative two squared, when you put in negative two, that's four. Negative two times negative two, that becomes plus four again. Plus four over negative two minus two, that's negative four. So four plus four plus four is 12. 12 over negative four, that's minus three. So the limit is working out to be negative three. Nice, so that's the limit, negative three. Part three. Part three says, by using the fact that the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is one, hence or otherwise, find the limit of two x cubed plus four x over sine two x. Let's do this limit now. They want us to evaluate the limit as x approaches zero, what is the the limit as x approaches zero of two x cubed plus four x over sine two x. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2x. I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2x. All right, I'm going to divide both the denominator and the numerator by 2x. That's not going to change anything. Dividing the numerator and the denominator by 2x, I'm going to get the limit as x approaches zero of, now 2x cubed over 2x, that just works out to be 2x squared plus 4x divided by 2x. 2 divided by 2 is 2x over x cancel. So let's get 2x squared plus 2 divided by sine 2x over 2x. sine 2x over 2x. Now, according to limit laws, what I can break this down as now, I can rewrite that this is gonna be equal to the limit of, limit of the numerator part now, so it's a limit of 2x squared plus two. Wait, 2x cubed over 2x, two divided by two. 2 divided by 2 cancel. x cubed over x is just x squared. So this 2 is supposed to go on. 2 over 2 is 1. x cubed over x is x squared. 
my apologies there. So that's x squared plus two divided by the limit as x approaches zero now of sine two x over two x. Now when I apply the limit, apply the zero in the numerator, I get zero plus two is two. And then the limit as x approaches zero of sine two x over two x is one. So all of this works out to just be two. Nice and easy, soft. Part B. Let's go to part B now. Part B says the function, the function f on R is such that f of x is a piecewise function. f of x is a piecewise function. They tell us f is equal to, it's a piecewise function. It's defined by x squared plus one. And it's also defined by four plus px. x squared plus one and four plus px. X, x squared plus one, where x is greater than one. And four plus px when x is less than one. That's the function f. And it says, find the limit as x approaches one of f of x. Find the limit from the positive side. So part a. All right, just to save space, let's do part A up here. Let's do it right here. We want the limit as x approaches one from the positive side. So if we want the limit as x approaches one of f of x, all right, then what we're going to do is we look at which one is saying x is greater than one. That's the positive side. This one, so the limit is going to be one square plus one. So it's going to be equal to one square plus one, which is two. So that's part A, two. It says now find the value of P such that the limit as X approaches one of F of X exists. All right, now, in order for the limit to exist, right? In order for the limit to exist, the limit will exist if and only if the limit as X approaches one from the positive side of the function must equal to the limit as X approaches one from the negative side, right? The limit from both sides must be equal. When the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit, then the limit of the function exists. All right, so this is what we're gonna to have to use to solve this question. So that implies the limit from the left-hand side we said is two. And so two is equal to, the limit from the right is gonna be four plus, four plus P times one. P times one is P. All right, and so bringing over, what we're gonna get is P is equal to two minus four, which is negative two. All right. Nice and easy. All right, so hence P is negative two. All right, that's the solution. Then here, the last part now it says now, hence determine the value of f of one for f to be continuous. For f to be continuous, then for f to be continuous, then the limit of the function must be equal to the functional value. And so what they're then telling you then is that f of one 
must be equal to two. F of one must be equal to two, all right? F of one must be equal to two for the function to be continuous. Nice and easy. Now, let's go to the final part of the question, part C. 